welcome Selects Nation. It is February 1st, which means it's a new month and we have a new promo. Yes, so a new promotion. This month, if you enroll a brand new QLA or preferred customer, that new QLA or preferred customer is gonna get the ticket to this upcoming Dave Discovery in March. Yeah, next month we have Dave Discovery Virtual and they are going to get a, a ticket for free to come to that Dave Discovery. What else are they getting? Well, and that's that's March 9th to 15th. It is. When it's gonna be available yes. so they can you can let them know that. They're also gonna get access to last year's Dave Discovery, yes. which was received really well. And then on top of that? 20% off. 20% off, they're gonna get the coupon code during that week of the Dave Discovery event. Now there's something else with Dave Discovery. Yes. That we want to, since it's the first, this is the last month to get the Dave Discovery tickets on your own for, for the price that it's at. It's going, the price is gonna increase on March 1 as we kind of hone in on who's gonna be attending to make sure we get our messaging put together and our access set up for you to access that event. We're excited about it. We've been recording for quite a while. Uh, a lot of really impressive people. Oh yeah, we have right? a lot of variety on this, a lot of education, business building. We have a lot going on with this yep. Dave Discovery. We also have a new scanner uh, feature upgrade that is Ooh, going to be fantastic. I feel like you're revealing too much. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's coming for Dave Discovery. We want to remind you also of our contest mm -hmm. with getting together with your team, the biggest team get together. We need video, we need photographic proof of this. Or video. Or video. Or video works. Or both. Yeah. yeah. Um, send that to us and everyone that is in that picture or video will receive a prize from yeah. us if you the are biggest group. the biggest group. Right, the yes. biggest group. Mm -hmm. Speaking of big groups or okay. good groups, we're, yes. we're gonna have a decent group. We on our cadence of our system for this year yes. in June, on June 15th to 18th. So we're gonna ask you to mark your calendars on this. Platinums, platinums and above, we're going to have a live event here in Utah. It's our leadership event. It's a leadership event. And so if, if you are a platinum or higher or you're working towards that, you're invited. Uh, we will be asking for RSVPs at some point, but we just want to make sure you have the calendar dates right now to mark those, to reserve those if you would like to attend with us. We're going to have a lot of fun there too. We'll There's have more information. information, more information coming to you soon. Uh, so don't worry about that, but do mark off your calendars for those dates and know that that is here in Utah. Um, that's else? new. That's oh. new for us. We have something else that's new. A new course. Mm -hmm. And this is from Jennifer Nelson Hawks and Pamela Wingert. Yeah, uh, you have seen them a couple of times on these calls. And also, if you have phase three, then you have seen Jennifer Nelson Hawks on yes. there. But they have this amazing course coming out. And along with a book, it's called Simplify from Head to Toe. And you will learn a lot about your body and about AO Scan and how they work together hand in hand. So uh, we're going to turn the time over right now to Jake and Deb to do our contests and our top enrollers. And then after that, we're going to show you a little preview of the course. And uh, it's going to be great. You ready? I love it. Okay. Hey, friends. It's uh, Jake and Deb, your uh, favorite team to do the top, en top enrollers and the contest winners. Right? We're happy to be it's back. It's been so long. It's we're... been a minute since and we've so... seen you. <laughs> and then we're going to give something away, right? You were saying earlier that we need to give something yes. away. Oh, yes. We love doing that. Let's give something away. Okay, so All the right. top enrollers for the week of, let's see, January 29th. 23rd. Through, 23rd through, through the 29th. Through the 29th. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Yes. And so we had a few ties for yeah. second place. We have a tie. There was a two-way tie for second place, which is... Gregory Hoper. And Zane McCourtney. Great so job, you Good too. job. Awesome. I, that was, that's awesome. That's a big deal. And then we have a three-way tie for first, um, for being the top enrollers for this, for this week. So the first one is... Caitlin Ryman. Caitlin Ryman, Jody McTavish, and... Rita Dickinson. Like, Rita oh, familiar Dickinson. face, right? Yes, familiar and face. And get a, uh, well, coin. in some cases, another... Another. Select silver coin. Yep. They get to join the legacy Coming group. Coming your way. That's awesome. Great job. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah, good everybody. job, you guys. Keep up the great work. And so we had a contest, and I think it kind of coincided with last week's call. We had Alice on the call yes. talking with Lauren about uh, homeopathy and kind of her new course coming out that's on yeah. uh, Solix University. Yeah. And uh, Her book is wonderful, her book by is the way. awesome. And, it's um, so helpful. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And it's yes. a live book, so it'll constantly be updated with yes. her new research. Yes. And she's a scientist, and yes. she's amazing. Yeah, anyway. It is awesome. Definitely uh, recommend that. And uh, recommend. we're giving away... 
a uh, little, well, actually a little, <laughs> 25 of these. Yes, with the boxes also, the EMF boxes in them. So they're the sucrose pellets and they're imprintable. So these are really helpful, especially if you're using Alice's book to imprint homeopathics on this, uh, on the sucrose pellets. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this so is really great. So we asked you for the contest was to comment or comment about Alice's course, or if you have any questions for Alice uh, regarding homeopathy or kind of all that. Yes, yes. And everything. Yes. So we, we have it's a lot. Been a, it's been an adventure for me. Oh, Whoa, wow. we're dropping them. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> Awesome. These are the three winners, the ones that popped right out. Gosh. Jake, come on back. Okay. All right. You want to read the first one? <laughs> you bet. All right. The first one is Amplify HW. Clearly, we're going to need your um, information so that we can get the, the sucrose pellets out to you. So my question for Alice is, first of all, it was such a pleasure listening to you speak. Agreed. Clearly, it's your passion. You light up when you speak about it. Thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us. My question is twofold. Do you have a favorite vendor you recommend for practitioners? There are so many available. Secondly, are there a max amount of remedies in a combination that shouldn't be exceeded? Those are great wow, questions. That's awesome. I can't wait I to guess hear somehow Alice's we'll, answer. Either she's watching the call maybe and she'll yeah. comment or we'll get this question to her. Yes, awesome. two, two questions. Great, great, awesome. great um, feedback too. Yeah, great question. Sucrose pellets coming to you. Yes, congratulations. Okay, I Amplified. guess the other one that fell out. Here, you can have this one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys jumped right out of our contest. Yeah, Literally, wow. they jumped right out. <laughs> okay, so this is... Uh, Ooh, I'm not sure. Ao Mott. Yes. So again, you'll have to contact. Customer no, we know support. him. We oh, know Ao Mott. Okay. Oh, we great. know him. Yep. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Alice makes homeopathy exciting as a wellness tool. My question is: When using a nose, a nosode, I'm guessing yep, she meant nosodes. nosode there. Yep. As a substitute for a vaccine, how long is the nosode expected to be used? For example, if a person has an imbalance such as the flu and energetically I broadcast to them or imprint a Cephi dot with the remedy, is it expected to only be used for 72 hours or should it be given again until imbalance subsides? I understand that it can be more effective if used with the physical remedy. Oof, man, these questions are just... <laughs> You're not a homeopathic no, not yet. expert. Yeah, we're working on it too. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations. Uh, hey, you, uh, you get that. Okay, we have another one. <laughs> this one, I don't know who you are. Um, AO Scan Info is, is the name on here. Wahoo, congrats, Alana V and Kately Carlson and Steph Warner. Go Team Taurus. Um, we always love hearing from Alice. Thank you for sharing your wit and wisdom with us. So whoever AO Scan Info is, let us know who you are so we can send yes. you your, your um, sucrose pellets. That's awesome. Well, awesome. This, this was a lot of fun. Congratulations. I, I know. I this. like giving this stuff is, away. This is great. Um, we should do it more often. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, Shelby and Kai kind of mentioned this in their, uh, in their segment about um, a new course coming to Solix University. It's called Simplify from Head to Toe, and it's, it's a great course. I mean, it's a big, long chunk of a course about the AO scan. Uh, they talk a lot about vitals, and, and, and they go into food sensitivities. It's just a lot of stuff. Really great. Um, I've been lucky because I've been able to, to edit that. So I, That's awesome. I, I've watched that several times through, and it's really good. They're, they're, they're such awesome presenters and educators. And so after this, we're going to watch actually a, a little bit of a, a kind of a trailer um, just to get you excited about, about this course. course. And awesome. uh, so anyway, check that out. And uh, well, it was great to be here. I well, know. It's great to be with all of you. What is your body telling you at this given moment? And why we're here is because we want to be able to provide all of you with information about how to put the dots together and understand what our scanner is telling us. I think it's going to be our job to really work together to get you to kind of break it apart in section by section, but then know that all of that information is really 
a picture of what's going on so that we can then turn that around, give your body the frequencies that it needs to balance what's out of balance. And we're gonna give you module by module of um, what is in our book and what we can show you how to connect those dots. And I think, Pamela, we're gonna go ahead and just go down what our AO scan is showing us. And I think it's very important to understand that chakras and meridians are the gateway to energy throughout our body. And then when you're looking at other groups, I feel like let's talk about like knowing that you don't have to know all these things. Going to the book as far as for like looking at a certain food, so for instance, histamine foods. I can see that avocados and bananas and pineapple and certain things that will show up in the book that actually are gonna tell me maybe why. So use your book as a handbook to actually go to to find out why you think maybe that was showing up for you. And just because it's not in here doesn't mean it doesn't exist. No. This is just a starting point. It's just education and it's just a tool. And most of you might um, have been told by maybe one of your doctors that it's like, you should go on like a FODMAP diet or a um, lectin-free um, diet. And so those are all listed in the book. And so I think that's gonna be helpful. Which is all gonna turn back to your scanner. Look for those patterns. Yeah, it's all about the patterns. Remember, our goal is to help you with the information. And we're gonna hit on a key points of what what's in our physical functionality list. So I think we need to think outside the box. I think all of these things are things that as we start to learn more and more about them, it's like we'll look at those things on our scanner. We are gonna go over an easy scan in enhanced view today. We get asked questions a lot of how do we read these in real time? So we thought we would come on and show you. So the first thing we start out um, is knowing on the enhanced view is gonna be all about colors and numbers. Um, but if we're, if we're looking at the scanner and we just keep seeing patterns showing up, remember we're talking about patterns. That's probably the biggest key I can say about any of the um, opportunistic pathogens. Make sure that you have a strong army, make sure you have the tools, and we have one of the best tools to be able to help with like a playlist on a daily basis, which I think is so valuable. Yeah, and you don't have to have symptomology. Remember that you don't have to be symptomatic for things to show up and um, it's, it's just an education tool. I totally 100% believe that you need to use the scanner to be able to connect these dots. And so then if you really think about everything that the scan has shown, it's like we would go back to the inner voice, we would make a playlist, we would use this information to go after some of those areas to make a playlist that we could run either for today or you could run it for a week. It's like whatever you think that you need for that protection. The body has its own innate way of balancing. So you have all the information you need right here. Use your book, utilize it in a way that it's like you can learn because every time you do a scan, the information is going to be different. And so you can learn how to put those pieces of the puzzle by going through your book. And this is going to be um, presented to you in a live PDF form. So we will, as we update the book um, throughout, throughout time, you will see different volumes, so we look forward to seeing you in the future with more information. Hi, I'm Becky Coots Kimberly. Tonight we're going to be talking about food sensitivities on the AO scan. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into what some of the things that are popping up on the scanner may actually mean. For those that don't know me, a little bit of background, I've been a traditional naturopathic doctor for about two years now, and I'm also a certified functional medicine practitioner, and I'm working with clients all over the, all over the world right now. Um, and I've been using the AO scan device for a little bit over two and a half years, and there's been a lot of different things that I've noticed, especially with the food sensitivity section, and that's what I wanna go over tonight. All right, so I have a report pulled up right now on my phone. So I'm going to be glancing at that as I'm going through and kind of talking about some of the things that I commonly will see as I'm walking through someone's scans. Now, I like to look at the food sensitivities um, a couple different ways. So an example would be last night I went out to eat and had a little bit of sour cream, so I cheated a little bit. Um, and today I actually had butter show up and um, casein as well as goat's milk. 
So normally those things don't show up for me, but because I had a little bit of that dairy last night, there is some residual sensitivity showing up today on my scans. Um, some other things you can kind of look at, especially with the dairy, is if someone's having a lot of histamine showing up. So as I get down a little bit lower in the scans when we start talking about fruits and vegetables, I'll start to go through some of the common um, items that you will see that might have a lot of histamine foods in them. So that might alert you that the person that you're working with may need to have some histamine foods taken out. So the next category we have are the fruits. So not on my scan, but sometimes on other people's, I might see apricots, I might see avocados, bananas, um, a lot of the citrus fruits show up. Those are going to alert you that some of the histamine foods may need to come out. Now, something that I like to do is as I'm looking through some of these foods, I'm gonna make little notes on my notebook paper for the client that I'm working with. And I might just jot down some of those foods that are coming up. That way, as I get down further in the vital scan, if I see histamine showing up, then I can refer back to those histamine foods that I was suspected that maybe that client needed to remove, and then we can remove them temporarily and just see if that improves. Some other foods that you might notice too, we all know what nightshades are. Um, in the fruit and vegetable category, you'll see tomatoes show up. So now tomato is a nightshade. That is one of the nightshades. So if you see tomatoes, and then possibly down further when we get to the vegetables, maybe potatoes and eggplant showing up, that might alert you that that client that you're working with may need to have some of those nightshade foods removed. Grains, we get to the grain category. Now, personally, I don't eat gluten, but a lot of times when I look at my scans, sometimes gluten does show up. Today, obviously it didn't, but you can see how millet showed up, corn showed up, um, and then brown rice. So sometimes you'll notice that maybe it's, say you go out to eat and you might order something gluten-free, but keep in mind a lot of times when they're cooking meals behind, there, there's some, gonna be some cross-contamination. So you still may be picking up some gluten. The other thing you might notice too is there's a whole list of gluten-reactive foods. So rice is one of those foods. Um, Corn is one of those foods. Quinoa, I don't think though quinoa shows up on our grains. That might be a good one to add. Um, so if those are showing up, you might wanna suspect that maybe that client needs to have all gluten taken out, including those gluten reactive foods. When we get to legumes, legumes and nuts or beans and nuts, again, are two categories that I typically will look at if someone has a lot of red showing up in those two categories, a lot of times that'll alert me that that person might have some gut issues, maybe leaky gut. Um, beans are really inflammatory as well as nuts for a lot of clients. So if you see a lot of categories showing up in that department, that might be what's going on. Now, a lot of times I get questions from people because they like to look at each individual category I tend to like, I look at things globally. So let's go back to the grain category for me. There are lots of reds showing up in that grain category for me. So rather than focus on each individual one, like barley, bran, brown rice, buckwheat, corn, millet, and spelt, in my mind, I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say to myself, I need to make sure I have all grains taken out for the next few days and just monitor and see how I feel. I think sometimes people get so hyper-focused in trying to fix or eliminate one thing at a time instead of looking at the whole entire category. Now, meat is another interesting category. Sometimes I will notice beef showing up for some of my clients. So, there's a couple different ways that you can look at this. Sometimes maybe you just had beef the day before and it's coming up. Sometimes I notice with beef, it may be because that person needs copper or maybe they need iron. So as I scroll down through the vital scan, when I start getting to those minerals, I can confirm if maybe someone does have low copper or low iron 
And that, in fact, is why the beef is showing up in the meat category. Seafood category, again, you can kind of look at the types of fishes that are coming up. Maybe they're bottom feeders. Maybe they have a lot of antibiotics in them. Um, maybe someone actually needs omega-3s, and that's why salmon's showing up. There's a lot of different ways that you can look at this. Sometimes with my clients, if I have a food that might be suspected as an irritant, I might have them eat just a little bit of that food, run a scan, and then see if that suspected food comes up. You can also do like what I did with the dairy, eat a little bit of sour cream or a little bit of the suspected food, and then scan and see if that does come up. And then monitor your symptoms and notice if you have any maybe... Um, gas, bloating, diarrhea, any digestive issues. Maybe your hands and your fingers start to swell. Maybe you get a little extra mucus discharge. Um, maybe you break out in a skin rash. Um, I know personally for me, I have not been able to put quinoa back in in a couple years. The last time I had quinoa, I actually broke out in hives in 24 hours, so that was interesting. So even though quinoa is gluten-free, there are still gluten reactive proteins in there that my body is still reacting to. So in the nuts section, again, I kind of talked about if there's a lot of nuts showing up in that section, you might want to suspect that that person has some gut issues, maybe digestive issues, maybe they're starting to trend or lean towards leaky gut, um, and then maybe some of those foods just may need to be taken out for a certain amount of time. You can also explore and play around with um, some nut butters. What I've noticed is maybe someone doesn't tolerate the raw cashew or the raw almond, but they might be okay with a little bit of almond butter or a little bit of cashew butter. And again, if you're not sure, you could have your client eat a little bit of that and run a scan and then see if that's coming up for them. Seeds, they tend to be in the same boat as nuts. And again, if you can picture your gut being really inflamed, nuts and seeds can kind of create, a, create more inflammation in the gut. So when we're looking at doing some type of gut program or protocol, we want to try to pull out as much inflammation as we can. So oftentimes you'll see nuts and seeds having to have to be removed for a little bit. Now, the spices category can get really interesting Sometimes what I notice with my clients is maybe when some of these particular foods are coming up, it might be reflecting elsewhere on the scan that they actually may need that. So what do I mean by that? If I scroll down to, let's go to cilantro. Um, cilantro is actually used as a heavy metal detox. So maybe your client consistently has cilantro showing up and they're not eating it you could actually look further down in that vital scan and maybe look and see like what heavy metals are showing up in them. What is their liver doing? What are their detox pathways doing? That client could potentially need some cilantro to help start to detoxify their body. Clove is another one. Um, clove and I think oregano is in here down further. Those two are antiparasitics. So again, if Maybe in the vitals section, you scroll all the way down to the parasites. Maybe that person has tons of parasites showing up. And then maybe cloves is showing up as well as oregano. You could potentially suspect that that client may need to take an antiparasitical. Coffee is another category. Um, a lot of times I'll see coffee coming up if I suspect someone maybe has mold, fungus, or candida. So if someone is continually coming up with coffee, you might want to look further into the vital scan and just see what's going on in the fungus category, the candida category, um, and the mold category. And maybe if you start to see a lot of markers in those categories, you might want to think about pulling coffee out temporarily. If we scroll down to... Let's see some other ones. So mint is another one. That's actually a, a gallbladder cleansing food. So now we can start looking at the liver and the gallbladder. Um, maybe your person needs some help with gallbladder cleansing. Some of the foods would be parsley. That's another herb that shows up. We have mint, 
Um, let's see if there's anything else. The rest are going to be in your vegetable category. So artichokes are going to be a gallbladder cleansing food. If we move down to beets, beets are actually going to be a gallbladder cleansing food too. So now you can start to see how if groupings of these foods are showing up, if you have a large group, maybe that person needs histamine foods removed. If you're seeing a lot of nightshades showing up, so some of the most common nightshades are going to be our tomatoes, potatoes, um, and eggplant. You, and if you see those showing up, you might want to suspect removing those foods temporarily. There are oxalates. A lot of, not a lot of people talk about, talk about oxalate foods, but some of the most common oxalate foods are going to be your sweet potatoes and your spinach. So again, if you recurrently see those showing up on the scanner, you might want to suspect oxalates. You could scroll down to the kidney function in your vital scan. And if you see a lot of kidney markers showing up, you might want to contemplate taking out oxalates for your clients. Um, we already talked about beets. Bell peppers, again, that goes with the nightshades. Broccoli, I actually had broccoli show up the other day for myself because I haven't been eating a lot of broccoli. Um, and broccoli is a food that has lots of sulfur in it and we need sulfur. So I thought it was interesting because as I scroll down further, um, I believe in the vital scan in the liver section where it gives you the methylation phases, the glutathione, the sulfation phase had actually come up double red for me that day. So I was taking that information that the sulfur phase was a little bogged down and I actually needed some broccoli that day to um, satisfy that need for sulfur. Some of the other foods, um, celery can go either way. Celery can be a high histamine food, so that potentially could be a food that needs to be eliminated if you suspect someone has a lot of histamine. But celery is also a really good food to cleanse the gallbladder. So that, looking at those foods in conjunction with then other parts of the vital scan, maybe looking at the liver, looking at the gallbladder, looking at the total bile acid, seeing if that stuff's coming up in correlation with the celery, that should help provide you some information as to whether or not you need to add those foods or eliminate those foods. Um, eggplant's another one. Again, we talked about how that's a nightshade. Kelp. Kelp has been an interesting one that I've noticed come up with a lot of my clients. Kelp is iodine. So sometimes I'll see kelp show up, and then when I scroll down into the vitamins and minerals section, I might see that there's a need for iodine. So really the body is trying to tell me, yes, you need kelp, but it could also be in the form of iodine. Mushrooms, a lot of times you'll see come up, um, again, they tend to be moldy, moldy foods. So mushrooms is a food that I will typically pull out um, if I know someone has a lot of yeast or fungus or mold in their system. Um, so again, if you're seeing that showing up, you may want to think about pulling that, pulling that food out. Onions is going to be a nightshade. Um, potatoes, we talked about those being a nightshade as well as a oxalate food. And then what are some common ones? Spinach. We talked about spinach and how that can be a high oxalate food. So again, if you're noticing maybe spinach coming up double red, and you, maybe you notice sweet potatoes, like actually today for me, sweet potatoes came up double red. Um, and I haven't had sweet potatoes in a while. So, and ironically enough, since I've been traveling, I haven't been drinking as much water. So there was a lot of other kidney markers that were showing up today. So now I'm already starting to put two and two together about how sweet potatoes, oxalates, and kidneys are all related. Um... And that's about all that I have for tips and tricks for the food sensitivity scans. So I just want you to just keep in mind that just because something's coming up doesn't always mean it necessarily needs to be removed. Again, you want to track your scans over periods of time, at least three to five scans, and notice what those trends and patterns are saying. It could be telling you that you need specific foods or specific nutrients, and that's why the brain is registering those. So thank you for allowing me to come on and just kind of go over some of the tips and tricks that I have with food sensitivities. 
And hopefully this will be able to help you begin to start to connect the dots on your scans. Well, Becky Coots Kimberly Lauren is a talent. She knows oh, her she stuff. Is. Yes, she does. Right? Yes. And she taught us about food sensitivity. So I think we should carry that, uh, that, that forward. I like that idea. Right? Okay, so on this call, comment something that you learned about food sensitivities. Food sensitivities in general or maybe even as it relates to the scanner. Something you learned from Becky. Uh, and, and with that powerhouse, I think there's a lot to draw on, but feel free to go back and re-listen to her if you need to. If we do that, what should we give away? X. X by, go, by Solex, let's, let's yes. Again. Give away uh, three Xs. Yes, at three Xs, three people. We're going to give you, uh, we're going to draw your name next week. Based on your comments here, we're going to read those comments, and uh, hopefully we all learn something more, or at least reinforce it. You know, every week when they get comments, we learn something. It's true. The, the comments we get are amazing. Yeah, let's amazing. make a plug for that. Those that just take the time to participate, we love reading those. Yeah. Thank you amazing. for commenting on these calls, because I know that not only do we learn, and Shelby's mentioned it many times, but... but Everybody else who takes the time to, to listen and, and read from yeah. other people, they, they really great. get a lot. Yeah. So, okay. See you next week.